among the people. I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. A very warm welcome indeed to all of you to Christ Church Cathedral this evening. And to those who are watching at home, a very warm welcome as well. We're very glad to have all of you with us as we celebrate this wonderful evening in which we really come together as a family of disciples of Jesus. Jesus who calls us his friends. And we're thrilled to be inducting, welcoming new honorary canons and members of the Order of St. Frideswide. So as we pray together as Jesus friends, let's remember that this cathedral is here to serve you, to serve the diocese, to serve the mission of Christ in our world, in our time.
from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares, she raises her voice. <coughs> At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entry of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no one heeded. And because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you. When panic strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof, Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. Here ends the reading. Reverend Father in God, in recognition of their contribution to the life of the diocese, I present to you Catherine Winrow and James McNamara and ask that you would formally admit them, along with Jan Fishwick in her absence, to the order of St. Frideswide. The first sentence of our Old Testament reading. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares she raises her voice. It is very humbling uh, every year across the Diocese of Oxford to recognize God's gifts of wisdom in those who serve in different capacities as senior lay members of our diocese. And it is a great pleasure and joy to admit this evening to the Order of St. Frideswide three of our number who have demonstrated exceptional wisdom in their different fields. And I commend them uh, to you this evening. Uh, Kathy Winrow has offered wisdom in her leadership in education across a whole lifetime as a head teacher as chair of our first diocesan multi-academy trust uh, since 2012 in her role on General Synod and alongside all of this in her diligent and careful and creative ministry with children and young people in her own parish. Kathy, we thank God for your wisdom in education. Uh, James has served in the life of the church and the diocese and community in many different ways. I have known him as a member of the Bishop's Council. He has served on committees to do with finance and buildings. Uh, his voice is deeply respected. He has an immense care and love for detail, the ability to express both support and dissent with great courtesy and is widely and deeply respected outside the church as well as within it across our diocese of Oxford. James, we welcome. Jan Fishwick is not able to be with us. 
uh, on several occasions, I have had the privilege of visiting Alana House in Reading. Uh, the headquarters of PACT, uh, our agency which works with children being adopted, uh, with those seeking refuge, and so many other groups. On each occasion I have visited Alana House, my vision for what PACT is doing has grown, and my appreciation of Jan's passion and gifts of leadership and creativity have grown with them. Jan has stepped down from that role now. She will, I am sure, find other ways to deploy her gifts across the Diocese of Oxford. But we do thank God for her, and I commend her to you this evening. If you're able, please stand. Lord of the Church, we give you heartfelt thanks and praise for Catherine, Jan, and James, and for all that they have done to serve the gospel and your people in this diocese. Bless them richly, and may the example of Frideswight, her courage, her vision, her patient endurance, inspire them as they seek to do your will in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And James, I admit you to the order of St. Frideswine.
A reading from the Epistle of St. James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Here ends the reading. The first line of our New Testament reading. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Uh, this evening is about the recognition and appreciation of the gifts of God in those called to be honorary canons. But we make this act of recognition aware that this year, in every context, has been a year of great suffering and triumph. And we take a moment to be still and quiet and pray for our different contexts across the diocese from which our canons and new members of the Order of St. Brian's Wives come and for our cathedral church and to remember uh, the context in which we make these canons now. prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. And so it is a great joy uh, to commend to you all and to the whole diocese our new honorary canons, uh, all of whom I've had the pleasure of coming to know at least a little and of working with in different contexts. Uh, Mark Bennett has been team re rector of Thatcham uh, for almost 20 years. He served as an area dean uh, in many different contexts in our diocese, and he's currently undertaking at least three, I think, tasks at diocesan level. Uh, he has been uh, and is in every place where he serves a bringer of both stability and uh, close attention to detail. He is a person to whom others listen and mark his words. Mark, we thank God for you. Janet is currently rector in the benefits of Hedsall and Bourne End and is about to move to take up the new role of area dean of Slough. Uh, Janet is a runner uh, she has been active with great courage and 
care. Uh, following the Black Lives Matter movement last year, both in our wider community and in the life of the diocese, as we have sought to respond in different ways to the calling of our times. Janet, we appreciate your care and wisdom and joy. Uh, Dave uh, has been rector of the 4U team in Marlow since 2012 and area dean of Wickham Deanery since 2016. He has brought to both roles and many others great imagination and vision. He has a wonderful gift for encouraging others and for raising up new leaders. Dave, we appreciate your joy and wisdom and creativity. Charles Chadwick has brought immense wisdom to his work as a parish development advisor as part of our missionary ministry and ministry team for the Dorchester area. Charles has helped educate me and many others uh, in uh, the rural dimensions of the Diocese of Oxford, uh, where he has developed with great care some wonderful and effective strategies for change and, uh, and deployment. Uh, he is a, a gracious advocate for the rural church and a patient accompanier uh, in mission. Charles, thank you for all that you give. Uh, Richard is rector of the parish of St. Paul, Workingham, uh, the area dean of Sonning, and as the notes say, was acting associate archdeacon of Berkshire uh, for 12 months. What the notes do not say was that in all of the transitions in the Berkshire area over the last year, I think Richard was the only member of the senior team for some time. And he fulfilled that role with great strength and wisdom, uh, which he brings to all that he does. Uh, Richard, thank you for your ministry, and it's a great joy to welcome you to this canonry. Val is also uh, one of our most uh, committed advocates for the rural church across the Diocese of Oxford. Uh, she is interim rural dean for the Mersey Deania, Deanery and area dean for rural mission and development. Uh, she is able to win the confidence of clergy and parishes in many different contexts and the honor and respect of her colleagues across the diocese. Uh, one of her most significant gifts is the pastoral care she has been able to offer for the parish of Stowe and associated parishes during the last two years. Val, well, we thank God for you and for your ministry. Uh, John Tattersall has served as the chair of our Diocesan Board of Finance uh, since 2013. Uh, he has served in many other capacities across uh, the Diocese of Oxford and elsewhere. But in his capacity as DBF chair, uh, John has carefully stewarded our resources. Uh, he will step down at the end of this year, leaving our diocesan finances in remarkable shape, thanks to the generosity of a great many people and his own great skill. He's also uh, been courageous in the deployment of our rich resources as a diocese for the mission of God in the present day. John, thank you for the hours you have given to the careful stewardship of our finances and for your love and care across your ministry. And finally, uh, the Reverend Dr. Sally Welch uh, has served as Area Dean of Chipping Norton and is currently the Vicar of Charbury with Shahampton and also our Diocesan Spirituality Advisor. Sally's great passion, as many here will know, uh, is the recovery of pilgrimage. Uh, both locally in Chipping Norton, uh, uh, across our own diocese, and increasingly more widely uh, across the Church of England, working with a network of others. Uh, Sally has brought something fresh and new and original, a recovery of an ancient tradition 
which she is restoring to the whole church. Sally, we thank God for you and for all that you bring to us. I commend each of these eight honorary canons to the prayers of the diocese, thanking God for their ministries. We, Stephen John Lindsay, by divine permission, Lord Bishop of Oxford, collate you, the Reverend Mark David Bennett, incumbent of the benefice of Thatcham in the Archdeaconry of Berkshire, and you, the Reverend Janet Victoria Binns, incumbent of the benefice of Headsaw with Bourne End in the Archdeaconry of Buckingham, and you, the Reverend David Thomas Bull, incumbent of the benefice of Great Marlow with Marlow Bottom, Little Marlow and Bissom, and area dean of the deanery of Wickham in the Archdeaconry of Buckingham, and the Reverend Charles John Peter Chadwick, Parish Development Advisor in the Archdeaconry of Dorchester, and you, the Reverend Richard John Lamy, incumbent of the benefice of Wokingham St. Paul, and area dean of the deanery of Sonning in the Archdeaconry of Berkshire, and you, the Reverend Valerie Isabel Don Francis Plum, area dean for rural mission and development, and rural dean of the deanery of Mersley in the Archdeaconry of Buckingham, and the Reverend John Hartley Tattersall, non-stipendary minister in the benefice of Wickham in the Archdeaconry of Dorchester. And we collect you, the Reverend Dr. Sally Ann Welsh, incumbent of the benefice of Chalgrew with Shorthampton and area dean of the deanery of Chipping Norton in the Archdeaconry of Dorchester. To the dignity or office of non-residentary canon in this Cathedral Church of Christ in Oxford, and we confer upon you all the rights and responsibilities that belong to such office, reserving to ourselves and our successors our episcopal rights, and observing the dignity and honour of the Cathedral Church of Christ in Oxford of the foundation of King Henry VIII, in witness of which our episcopal seal is affixed to this deed, and we have subscribed the same this 22nd day of June in the year of our Lord, 2021. Mr. Subdean, now that we have collated these our sisters and brothers, we request you to admit them to the canonry. by virtue of your collation and by the authority committed to me, I install you as honorary canon of this cathedral church. The Lord preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Janet, by virtue of your collation and by the authority committed to me, I install you as honorary canon of this cathedral church. The Lord preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. By virtue of your collation and by the authority committed to me, I install you as honorary canon of this cathedral church. The Lord preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen.
Charles, by virtue of your collation and by the authority committed to me, I install you as honorary canon of this cathedral church. The Lord preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Richard, by virtue of your collation and by the authority committed to me, I install you as honorary canon of this cathedral church. The Lord preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. steps. Perfect. Val, by virtue of your collation and by the authority committed to me, I install you as honorary canon of this cathedral church. The Lord preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. By virtue of your collation and by the authority committed to me, I install you as honorary canon of this cathedral church. The Lord preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Sally, by virtue of your collation and by the authority committed to me, I install you as honorary canon of this cathedral church. The Lord preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Pray for us as we shall pray for you.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
pray for us as we shall pray for you. And so, whether at home or here in the cathedral, we turn to the Lord in prayer for his church, for his world, and for all people according to their needs. We pray for our order of St. Frideswide, for Catherine, Jan, and James. For this cathedral church, for Martin, our dean, for our chapter, for Mark, Janet, Dave, Charles, Richard, Val, John, Sally, and for all our honorary canons. We pray that this become a place of peace and reconciliation, a witness to the love of Jesus, and a call to the world. living presence of the peace which is beyond our grasp, refusing to let us escape from all that troubles us. Give us courage to enter the darkness of the storm, that we may discover there the stillness of your abiding presence. We pray this after the pattern of Jesus and in the power of the Spirit. Amen. We pray for our world in this time of pandemic, for all who are suffering, for all nations at the heart of the storm, for a fair distribution of the vaccine and of all the good things that God gives us. We pray for the peace and prosperity of the nations, for the protection of the environment, and for the care of all with whom we share this planet. Loving presence, seeking always to create anew, even from the heart of evil, pain, and death, sustaining life in all your creatures and priasis and all our clergy and ministers. We pray for all God's faithful people and pray for our unity and witness to the good news of Jesus, who saves us. Living presence, insistent, implacable, facing us with the truth that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Raise us from the depths of exhaustion and despair, that we may be renewed with the energy of life and hope. We pray this after the pattern of Jesus and in the power of the Spirit. Amen. Pray for us as we shall pray for you. And so in a time of silence, we remember before God our own deepest needs and desires the unspoken prayers of our hearts. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, together with Mary, the mother of Jesus, Joseph, her husband, Frideswide, our patron, Verinus, and all the saints, we commend these and all our prayers to God, saying together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The 
joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen.